A conference hosted by the UN Women Regional Office for Asia and the Pacific and the Compact on Women, Peace and Security and Humanitarian Action has heightened attention on promoting peaceful and inclusive societies in the region. It's so important to recognize that the significance of the Women, Peace and Security Agenda to this region cannot be overstated in all aspects of public life. As we move forward and we look at including more women in the peacemaking process, in conflict prevention and resolution, it's so incredibly important that they are at the table because of the role that they play, not just because we want another woman at the table. Over 100 participants from 23 nations, from Bangladesh to Fiji and from Mongolia to Papua New Guinea, joined with regional entities and global compact signatories to share experiences, models and lessons learned on Women, Peace and Security National Action Plans. The objective was to advance a common understanding of the approach, strategies and partnerships needed to advance this agenda in light of emerging issues facing the region. In Nepal, we had 10 years of armed conflict from 1996 to 2006, and we are still struggling uh, to create a space, safe space for women survivors of sexual violence. So we try to bring uh, the notion of security is not the national security, but it is human security. Whenever conflict takes place or any natural disaster takes place, then women suffer the most. For one or two, arms conflict is not something that is common, but we do have a lot of issues that conflicts peace. Militaristic solution to the conflict is never as effective as a more holistic response as dictated by the human security framework. Uh, Samoa doesn't currently have a WPS NAP, but a WPS NAP would be very beneficial for Samoa so that we could answer the call of emerging threats um, and non-traditional threats such as cybersecurity and climate change. Climate change is an all-encompassing sort of situation right now, which means we need an all-hands-on-deck sort of response as well. Uh, so Women, Peace and Security and the WPS agenda and framework in general can serve as a means to uh, accelerate work on climate change and work on climate security as well. It's actually about women being resourced from civil society, from feminist movement, to actually define our peace and security and saying this is how we want the WPS strategy to be realized in our countries. While we champion the development and implementation of national action plans led by governments, we also emphasize that they should be co-led and co-owned by civil society. As we approach the 23rd anniversary of UN Security Council Resolution 1325, we acknowledge that the normative framework of women, peace and security is strong, but we all lag behind when it comes to effective implementation, both nationally and internationally. In such situations, it's important that we, through our multilateral cooperation, join each other and deliver to better together. For the compact, it comes with a totally new approach. It creates these synergies among the different mechanisms to focus more on the inclusion of different stakeholders and different actors. We have strong partnership with government, civil society, the private sector, and we know that with this strong political will, we can advance any WPS agenda. I think what we need to do to have progress on women, peace and security is to really involve grassroots activists and grassroots community service organizations in the policy making process. So we hope that the UN system will actually help close the gap between government and civil society. As CSOs, we do the implementation work. We work directly with communities and having us included and bringing a seat to the table for CSOs is very important and absolutely necessary.
we now have a policy in Bougainville where women will be protected. Peace will continue to grow. We will continue to strengthen peace through various pillars of uh, development. When the UN helps support that, it makes a difference. 